Hello everyone, this is Ben and welcome to Bathroom Brews. On this episode, I'm going to be going over my newest favorite commander, Baba Lasaga Nightwitch, or as Joey from EDH Rex says, Baby Lasagna. This 3 mana 3-3 three, three human warlock says, tap it, sacrifice up to 3 target permanents. If there are 3 or more card types from among the sacrificed permanents, each opponent loses 3 life and you gain 3 life and you draw 3 cards. I am in love with this commander for a couple of reasons. First, it draws me cards, and that is fun. Second, it isn't your usual Golgari strategy of reanimation or self-mill. And like always, if you enjoy this video and want to support the channel for free, hit that like button and leave a comment to help feed the YouTube algorithm. You can say something like, lasagna is good, but ravioli is better. And with all that housekeeping out of the way, let's get into the deck. First, let's talk about ramp. You're not going to find your classic green ramp cards like Nature's Lore, Three Visits, or Rampant Growth here. Since we need to sacrifice cards of different types, we want the deck to mostly be permanent based. So I actually included artifact ramp, such as Talisman of Resilience, Golgari Signet, and Relic of Legends. I know these aren't your normal includes in green decks, but here they're absolutely excellent. Since we will be sacrificing lands to our commander's ability, we want to make sure we're getting lands onto the battlefield. Everyone's favorite sad robot, Solemn Simulacrums here. We also have Wood Elves, Viridian Emissary, and Ordeal of Nihilia. The astute among you may have noticed that Baba's ability says up to 3 target permanents, meaning if we can sacrifice something that is, I don't know, a creature, artifact, and a land all in one, we get to draw 3 cards, deal 9 damage, and gain 3 life in exchange for 1 card. Seems like insane value to me. Almost as good as Ancestral Recall, so I made sure to include cards that are more than one card type. For lands, we have the Artifact Lands, Dark Moss Bridge, Vault of Whispers, Tree of Tales, and Dark Seal Citadel. And since Dryad Arbor is reasonably priced now, I included that as one of the creature lands. But two of my favorite lands are Mishra's Factory and Blink Moth Nexus. These colorless lands let you pay one colorless to make them into an artifact creature and is still a land. And they can pay for their own ability. Feel free to include more lands that become creatures, also known as man lands. I made sure to include artifact creatures also. Mere Convert, Laden Mere, and Copper Mere, just to name a few. But let's not forget the best creature in the deck, well, in my opinion, Psychosis Crawler. This 5 mana star star artifact creature has opponents lose 1 life whenever we draw a card. So with this and Baba out, each opponent will lose 6 life whenever we activate her ability. And don't forget enchantment creatures. Gloom Shrieker, Dockside Chef, not to be confused with Dockside Extortionist, and Corsair of Crufix. I also included Liquid Metal Torque and Liquid Metal Coating to turn any permanent we control into an artifact. This is especially good with the enchantment creatures I just talked about, because we make them into enchantment artifact creatures, which is three types. Let's make all of our creatures into lands. Ashaya Soul of the Wild will make all of our non-token creatures into forest lands in addition to their other types, so our artifact creatures become artifact creature lands, for example. But what if we could sacrifice our creatures again? Well, that's why I included Yodora Grave Gardener. This 5 mana, 5-5 five five tree folk druid says, whenever another non-token creature you control dies, you may return it to the battlefield face down under its owner's control. It's a forest land. Sadly, it does lose all other types and is just a land. Since we will be sending a lot of cards to the graveyard, we need ways of getting them back. Lands are easy, thankfully, with the new Conduit of Worlds that lets us play lands from our graveyard. It also allows us to cast a non-land permanent spell from our graveyard if we haven't cast anything this turn at sorcery speed by tapping Conduit. Not great, but when we need to keep permanent back, we can get it. Splendid Reclamation is a sorcery that will get all lands from our graveyard back onto the battlefield tapped, and World Shaper will do the same thing when it dies. And this is a creature, so it'll be easy to sacrifice. We also have Rancor. An aura that when it's put into the graveyard returns to our hand. Aspect of the Mongoose, which does the same thing. And my two favorite includes are Genju of the Fens and Genju of the Cedars. These one mana enchantments will enchant a swamp or a forest respectively, and for two mana, we can turn those lands into creatures. But here's the best part. When the enchanted land is put into a graveyard, we may return the Genju from our graveyard to our hand. So for three mana, we can turn any of our lands into creatures, sacrificing it and the Genju to draw three cards and returning Genju back to our hands. As for a creature recursion, we're running Persist, which is just a budget reanimate for non-legendary creatures. We have Eternal Witness and Timeless Witness, and also Silver Smote Ghoul. Now this ghoul was brought to my attention from a friend. At the beginning of your end step, if you gained three or more life this turn, you can return it to the battlefield tapped. We don't want to use our commander's ability only once each turn cycle. Unfortunately, Seedborn Muse is a bit too expensive for this deck, but if you have one, you should definitely make room for it. There is an enchantment that does something similar, Quest for Renewal. This two mana enchantment gets a quest counter whenever we tap a creature for any reason. So long as there are four more quest counters on it, you untap each creature you control during each other player's untap step. We already run a lot of mana dorks that we can tap for mana, so getting this to four counters is not a problem in this deck. And it lets us potentially draw 12 cards each turn. There's also the new Planeswalker, Tyvar Jubilant Brawler, 
which gives creatures haste for their abilities, and we can plus one him to untap Baba. And finally, Instill Energy. This one mana aura lets us untap our commander once during our turn for free. So if we combine all of these together, in theory, we could get three quest counters on quest for renewal in one turn. Let me know in the comments below what card you think I missed for this budget deck. You can find my personal Bobola Saga deck and this budget version in the video description below. Of course, special shout out to my patrons for supporting the channel. If you'd like to join them, you can find my Patreon linked in the video description as well. As always, a special thanks to my friend Garrick Morgan for creating the intro music. Their socials are also in the description. Don't forget to give this video a like if you liked it, just like if you didn't, and leave a comment to feed that algorithm. This has been Ben with Bathroom Brews MTG, and remember, always wash your hands.